Welcome back. Let's see how reinforcement learning is used to improve ChatGPT. Large language models are big neural networks that learn to predict the next word in a sentence. And if you saw our short video on large language models, you'll remember that they can do some pretty amazing things, like translate languages, write poems, create recipes, and even generate computer code but they also suffer from problems like bias, stereotyping, factual errors, and quality issues. How about jokes? I used to think I was indecisive, but now I'm not so sure. That's a pretty good one, right? This was written by a human. Here's ChatGPT's version of this joke. Hmm. Here are a couple of other tries with the same prompt. Okay, the last one is actually not too bad. I mean, I literally asked ChatGPT to make a joke about it. How can we make LLMs more funny? Well, part of the problem is that they're trained on the internet, and there are a lot of bad jokes on the internet. One idea is to remove the bad ones and retrain only on the good jokes. Indeed, getting really good training data can help improve results, but it only goes so far. Why? Well, suppose that this box represents the space of all jokes. Each point here is a joke. Say you have a training set of good jokes, and your task is to classify this new joke as good or bad. A machine learning algorithm will do this by defining a boundary between good and bad. But where should we draw this boundary? It's hard to know for sure. If you draw it this way, you get a different answer. A better approach is to train not just on good jokes, but on bad ones too, and then fit a boundary that separates good from bad. Now we can use both good and bad jokes to improve our LLM. If the joke is good, the network will reinforce the weights that contributed to those words. If the joke is bad, the contributing weights are penalized. So what does this have to do with reinforcement learning? Well, you can think of the LLM as a policy that predicts an action, the next word to generate. You don't get the reward until you're done generating the joke. This is like part one of our video, where you execute a series of moves, find out whether you won or lost, and go back in time to reward each individual move. This is the policy gradient method. Its PPO variant is popular for fine-tuning large language models. This is called reinforcement learning from human feedback, or RLHF for short. A challenge with RLHF is the data is harder to acquire. It's easy to download tons of jokes from the internet. It's harder to get people to label that data, to rate which jokes are red versus green in this picture. Fortunately, there are some shortcuts. First, we don't really need all of these points, just the ones near the boundary. That can save some effort. And often, you can get by with just a handful of points. This is pretty surprising. There are not enough points here to fully define the shape of the boundary. So why does this work? Well, one theory is that the LLM actually knows how to tell jokes already. It knows the shape of this boundary. But it's dormant somewhere in its memory banks. So when you fine tune the network with RLHF, it unlocks this capability. So the good news is that you can often unlock powerful capabilities with relatively few training examples. Great, but how does this all work in practice? Suppose that we start with this prompt. The LLM generates this continuation, and we get this reward. The model updates its weights and generates a new continuation. What's the new reward? We could go ask our human raters to evaluate this new joke. But there will be tons of iterations like this, so that will get very slow and expensive. We don't want the program to wait for human feedback with every micro-update. So instead, we'll train a reward network that predicts the reward that humans would give for each input. This way, we can just ask humans to rate jokes once, and the network can predict ratings for similar jokes all by itself. You'll notice our reward network looks a lot like an LLM. In fact, it's just an LLM with the top chopped off and replaced with a single scalar output. And to save time, you can freeze most of the network 
and retrain just the new part at the top. This allows the reward model to inherit an understanding of language without learning it from scratch. To sum it up, here's the approach we've described so far. We first have humans rate a bunch of text. We then train a reward network to predict human ratings, and then refine the LLM with reinforcement learning. But there are many variants to this basic approach. For example, we've been asking raters for good or bad labels. Well, is this joke good or bad? Um, sort of okay? We often have trouble making these binary decisions. But one thing's for sure, it's better than this joke. People are generally better at making comparisons like this. So some systems train a reward network to convert comparisons like this into numerical ratings, making sure that the joke on the left gets a better rating than the one on the right. RLHF has proven to be remarkably successful in improving many large language models, increasing accuracy, decreasing bias, and making them just a little bit more funny. So how are the jokes? Why did the RLHF algorithm consult a rabbi? It wanted divine feedback. I hope you've enjoyed this video on RLHF.